Shalom, when the soul of souls, but give no praise to hell, but Hashem, Yahusha, but Hashem, Kodash, the Balanus, the Apostle, great most, and an honor to you brothers doing the work of the most on truth and in sincerity. Yahweh's raw name of whom the world angry calls God, Jehovah, or Yahweh, his raw name is Yahweh, and the son's true name is Yahweh Shai, and when we pray, pray Yahweh, Bar Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Birmingham, in, Hermin, the, and Sham, meaning name. So, uh, the Apostle Rhyme Lab, I believe, did a video. Uh, a couple of days ago basically touched on you know translations right and one of the things um you know that came to mind right was just you know how how you know you'll be watching a film right in another language and will have the translations or whatever what have you but then what is translated is translated to be natural to the person listening to it right to the person listening to it right and um an example of this I'm going to go to this word here, right? It's uh, in Korean. So it says, Nuna, right? So Nuna, right? Which is, uh, you know, translated as sister. However, if you're watching a film, right, where the girlfriend is older than the, would you call it, is older than the, um, you know, than, than the boyfriend, right? Then the boyfriend may actually refer to, the, to, 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 to his girlfriend as Nuna. Right, because Nuna is just what, because uh, he's a whole different way. So, for instance, a, a younger male refers to an older female with one word. A younger male refers to an older male with one word. Vice versa, right? Which is why, for instance, there was that song Upper Gangnam Style, right? That was, if I remember uh, correctly, that's what a, a younger female says to an older male. However, the English translation purely said honey, right? And one of the things I said when I was, uh, you know, listening to the video and I was thinking about this particular topic, right, you know, I thought about just translation as, uh, as a whole and some of the difficulties, for instance, that film translators will have to, you know, trans translate films and stuff like that, right, um, you know, but bringing it into this thing of ours, that is the same thing, same issues, right, you know, that the, you know, translators of old, right would have had an had an encountered right so this is the cover of the king james right this is the holy bible containing the old testament and the new newly translated out of the original tongues and with former translations diligently compared and i believe that says it may, reified verified so like you're verified by his majesty's special council right Appoint, appointed to be read in churches imprinted at london by robert uh, uh, Robert Barker printed to the King's Most Excellent Majesty, right? Uh, Anno Domini 1611, right? So it's the, it's the cover of the 1611 King James uh, Bible, right? And one of, the, one of the reasons why I brought this out, right? Because well, it speaks about how, you know, was, uh, you know the old um, translations were diligently compared, right? And verified, you know, making sure that the translations were good and up to scratch, Right, when you read the full preface, um, which is quite, quite, quite lengthy, um, but when you read the full preface, right, it kind of, you know, I, I saw a bit in there where it was like talking about the 70, right, which uh, I'm, I'm, you know, of the belief is referring to the Septuagint, right? So then I found uh, this article, right, challenges in film translation. Film translation can be a tough and onerous job. If it's done well, it can help garner the acclaim of film technicians, right? And that's why, for instance, for the most part, we will read the King James because it's, it's, it's the best translation, the most direct translations out of the Hebrew into, um, out of the Hebrew and Greek into the English, Right now, we do look at the other these some of these other translations to go into them, right? Because they may say things in a in, in a much clearer way, right? So it's such that the common man today can you know understand exactly what it is that is happening, right? And ultimately, is this you know is this not uh, you know the most sized movie that we're living in, right? Um, it says although the typical challenges translation are all there in the world of cinema there are several other components that make it this even harder than usual right uh, so one of the things uh, first things is slang right so this is probably the hardest part of translating films culture insinuations are hard to describe even in the same language but that factor is exponential when translating to a dissimilar language right and th that's a key point here cultural insinuation that's why for instance you know, although I need to get into that book a lot more, right? Um, uh, culture uh, is very important, right? The book I'm referring to is uh, there's, a, there's a scripture 
it's not scripture. It's um, a cultural slug. I forgot. For, I had a word slug. Bear with me one second. Right, yeah, there's this, um, you can get a cultural background study Bible, right? And then it says, um, and, and the whole point of this is it basically breaks down, helps and helps understand, you know, the cultural background behind certain statements, right? Behind, you know, what is, uh, what was meant in different, um, you know, in different situations, right? Because we, we live in a different world, right? For instance, you know, the, you, you hear the apostles say, you know, to, 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 to Jake, Right, you've been in America too long, right? Because the way Jake thinks nowadays, they're not applying and understanding the world, uh, uh, you know, that the scriptures were written in, right? The you know, the whole rape thing is something that comes to mind, right? Because you know, Jake, you know, being in America for so so damn long, right? Being in the in this Western world, right? Get offended at that, right? But the scriptures talk about he that is offended in me. Um, so, for example, translating slang from Dutch to English would probably be easier than doing Russian to English. One reason is that both Dutch and English are part of the family of West Germanic languages, which include others like German and Yiddish. Another reason could be that because of their geographical proximity, these two cultures have developed in parallel, albeit independently. Right. And, you know, that that is um, something that is, uh, you know, is is, is interesting. Right. I was just it's leave it at that. It says consider this expression das Klotten van der Bock, right? In Dutch is usually translated translated as that's rotten or that's very bad. Right? However, the literal translation is that's testicles of the goat, which makes absolutely no sense in English when taken out of context. Right. Um, so we'll go on to this. It says profanity. This is another interesting area worth exploring. It is generally known that the first words and expressions, yada yada. Right, it says whether or not this is true is not the subject of discussion here, but it makes the point that profanity and swearing are universal phenomena that are unique in different languages and cultures, right? And one of the things that came to mind, right, was this particular uh, priest, right? It says Luke 13 from start from 31, right? It says the same day there came of the Pharisees saying unto him, get thee out and depart from hence for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, go ye and tell that what? Tell that fox. Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. Right now, in in in, in modern day English, folks, just I don't know, it is what it is, and you just carry on. But you know, you, you can read that and skip over it, right? But this is actually an insult. Now, this is an excerpt from the book that I was referencing. Right, it says that it says. For verse thirty-two, go tell that foxes foxes were considered cunning and shrewd, and often treacherous and deceitful. Most importantly here, they were destructive and were a threat to small domestic livestock, right? So that's actually, you know, going into, you know, the fact that, you know, the, you, you know these, these Edomites, you know, they're deceptive, right? You know, furthermore, you know, the Herodians would have looked like Jake, for example, but they weren't Jake, right? But then, you know, they, 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 they were, you know, destructive, right? They were, they were a threat, right, to the Israelites, Okay, so that's an example of an insult that you know in in modern days English basically has lost its 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 meaning, right? Because once again, cultures change, insults change, right? Um, so it goes and say it both uh, mean. Uh, so what do we read? So again, using the example of a Dutch and English, Dumbo, Dumbo is in Dutch is Dumbo and English, both mean the same and both are derogatory words. However, the challenge in translation makes itself known when obscure profanity is used in films. This is especially true in period film where a dialect that may not be popularly spoken is used. The real challenge here is to maintain the same level of offensiveness as the original word or phrase, yet as yet be as faithful to the original as possible. Right? Once again, you go back. You know, to the beginning here, right, to the to, 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 to the cover of the King James, right, where it basically speaks about, you know, uh, you know, there's a new translations, right, and I said when you read the preface, um, you know, like I said, it's lengthy, right, but, you know, goes into, into it a little bit more, right, um, uh, so like, where, where were we, right, so it goes on to it a little bit more, 
right? Nicknames, right? This is another confusing area for film translators because the, of the inherent cultural or behavioral connotations. For example, a character called Sticky Fingers uh, might mean that they're a kleptomaniac. I believe that's one that likes it still. I hate when it does that. I believe that's basically one that likes it still. While calling them um, placarage fingers in the Dutch version may fall flat. Right? In some cases, some translators may merely use the original in the translated version. Right, And you know what? That's kind of like... Ah, um, oh, I forget where that is. Um... Uh, I forgot how it's spelled. Um, let him be. I did a uh, look for it the other day. Um, uh, now nah, I forgot the the word escapes me at the moment. Narathama, Arathama, KGB curse. Um, let him be cold. Yeah, so like I forget, I forget what it was. Um, how how it's how it's said. But for instance, the scriptures um in certain places would say um you know let him be uh, narathma arathma or something like that it's like it completely escapes me but basically that phrase means to be accursed right let him be accursed okay and that's what basically that particular video that's, that's my video that particular uh, uh, in that particular instance the translation was direct right you know to keep um you know to keep the force of that particular statement that was made right um and I'm just seeing if there's anything else. Uh, no, there was one another point. I'm just trying to trying to remember. So while this is simply is not necessarily more effective than a literal translation, this becomes uh, a real challenge for film translate when it comes to movies about gangs or when I trying for example, when nearly every character has a carefully crafted name that describes their predilection, uh, passions, or propensity. The safest way here would be to take it to take the use it as is approach that way the integrity of the character's name is maintained etc etc et right um i forgot what the other point was right um but basically one of the things that they also speak about in this article right is basically going into how uh you know there's a certain level of diligence that a translator would have to do right now you know we understand that these scriptures have been translated but so to get the real a strength, the real force of them, right? One of the things that we have to do is to be diligent in our studies, to go into the meanings of words, to go into the backgrounds of certain statements that were made, right? And to, to, to truly understand them, right? Which brings about 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto the Most High, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly defining the word of truth, right? Because if you don't study, then there are certain pitfalls that you, you know, that one can fall into, right? They can fall into the hell pitfall, right? You know, believing that, you know, hell is a place where you go uh, uh, and burn forever, which is just Chris, Christian dogma, right? But when you look into the root words, you're like, yo, this isn't even, <clears throat> it's like, this isn't even, so I'm just take a drink or something. All right. <clears throat> It says, um, um, uh, you realise actually it's just talking about the grave, right? Because the scriptures don't talk about, you know, people burning forever, right? People being in in, 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 in eternal punishment, right? Because the scriptures, for instance, in Ecclesiastes says, right, in, uh, I believe it's like three, five, let me just grab it. Um, Ecclesiastes 3 16 right says and moreover I saw under the sun the place of judgment that wickedness was there and the place of righteousness the iniquity was there right so where where where's judgment right here on earth right this is where we come to suffer right this is the this is the place of our our captivity okay um what else uh, yeah, and then also you've got Job the third chapter right Job the third chapter speaks on um you know how you know earth uh, so sorry that how in the spirit world is where basically people 
uh, you know, people are at rest. Everyone is at rest in the spirit world, right? But it's here on earth where it is that people come and get judged, right? Um, the famous uh, example, right, is John three sixteen, right? So for, for God, you know, for the Most High, so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life, right? And this is what happens if you don't go into the root words and the meanings of words, because then you read this, for example, right, John seventeen and nine. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which Thou hast given me, for they are Thine, right? Because you then, so then it's like it's John. Is this a contradiction? Is how Shai contradicting himself here? What's going on? Right, but when you look into this word world, right, you realize it's from the Greek cosmos, right? G2889, right? An apt harmonious arrangement or constitution, order, or government. So basically a select group, right? An arrangement, a collection of things. So when you're reading John 3:16, this is basically saying, Oops, for most I loved Israel. Right? You want to translate it like that. The most I loved Israel that he gave his only son. Right, because when you look in, when you look at the story, right, the storyline, what happened, right? Uh, let me do this, right? What happened? You go to Hosea one, right, and ten, right? It says, "Yet then, uh, not the one in ten, yeah, it says uh, uh, verse nine, right, one and nine. Then said the Most High, right, call his name low on me, right, for you are not my people, and I will not." Be your power, right? Then you jump over to Romans 9, right? It says this, uh, Romans 9 and uh, 4, right? It says, to who, who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the what? The adoption, right? And how will we adopt it back to Yahweh Shai? Through, through, through Yahweh Shai, right? So, because that's ultimately the reason why Right, the Lord Most High gave Yahweh Shai to you know into this stead so that we can be adopted back to Yahweh by way of Yahweh Shai. Let me just finish this off. So it's and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of the Most High and the promises, right? Because when you read the precepts, you actually realize right that the that the the second covenant, right, the New Testament. Let me just make sure I'm using that word testament correctly. Um, uh, it says person's will, especially that part relating to a person's property. Um, uh, well, basically, the, the covenant, right? The new covenant is actually referenced in Jeremiah 31, right? Um, uh, and 31, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord Yahweh. I'll put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and will be their power, and they shall be my people. Right? So this is the second covenant, right? So that basically means, and the Jeremiah is uh, chronologically, right? Uh, just in, in terms of which we understand Yahweh Shai has come, has been in several different arc incarnations, right? But just as the man Yahweh Shai himself, Jeremiah is before Yahweh Shai, right? But this idea of a, a new covenant, right, has once again always been in, you know, always been a part of the Most High's plan, right? And Yahweh Shai is the reason for that, right? Because once again, he was the reason why. The Most High, so I'll read that again, John 3, 16, now we've got a bit more understanding, right? So for the Most High so loved Israel, right, that he gave his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, as was predestined from the foundation of the earth, that would that this would be the case, right? That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, right? Whosoever of believeth in him of the children of Israel should not perish, but have everlasting life, right? And, and, and once again, who was this promised to, right? With the children of Israel. Because if you can't sin, then therefore you can't die. And therefore you will have everlasting life, <laughs> okay? Um, so that's that one, right? And I'm just going to finish off real quick, um, you know, with the prologue of, of, of Sirach, right? Um, we'll jump straight to it, right? So see, clearly that's one one, the prologue of the wisdom of uh, Yahweh Shai, right, the son of Sirach, right, it says, uh, jump down, right, um, 
uh, for the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them, right? And like I said, all throughout the scriptures you see that, right? And one of the places that you get modern day uh, situations of that is, you know, you might watch a film in another language, but the translation isn't actually giving you the same level of information, right? The example that we started off with, here it just says sister, Right, but this word here actually goes into quite a little bit more than just sister, right? Um, let's see if we can, right? Older sister of a male, right? This is actually what it means, right? This is the older sister of a male. So if you've got an older sister, you can call her Nuna, right? And then I think, I forget what the other, the... I uh, know the, the the younger sister right is called uh, Yod the um, uh, Yodong Seng right so it's a completely different word right but even in this translation you've lost so much information right now imagine that's in in today's now imagine now the, you you know applying that to something as important as the scriptures man right why having the understanding the cultural understanding of what was going on at that time. Right, the, the 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 weight and meaning of certain things, right? Of of you know what was happening at that time, but more so the the original words used, right? Because everything loses its weight when it's translated. Okay, so as always, laws, laws, I was edifying. Until next time, we say shalom.